Everybody, welcome to Tuesday Morning Mic Talk. Thank you guys for being with me. Uh, I'm barely awake. I don't know why this morning. I'm just uh, slowly waking up. I know what it is. I'm taking some, uh, some Benadryl, which makes me very drowsy every night to go to sleep. Uh, because I didn't tell anybody this, but when, I, when we were on vacation, I woke up one morning and my whole underarm here was just kind of swollen and red. And I thought, wow, what happened? I, I think in the end I got bit by a spider. I started taking Benadryl on vacation and it's gone away, but uh, still a little bit of like a knot where a spider bit me, I think. Um, that's, my, that's the way that I go to the doctor. How about you? You guys doing well today? <laughs> you feeling all right? God's blessing on you guys. I'm praying for you, so please um, trust us with your prayers. Text prayer to that number on the screen, and we will pray for you. And uh, so grateful for all of you watching. I'm give a shout out to Geneva in Indiana today. God bless you, sister. Thanks for watching all the time. And uh, thank you guys for your gifts, your cards, your encouragements, uh, and most of all, your prayers for us. This is one of those uh, times of year where um, we, we got a little late this year in doing our taxes. So we're working on our personal taxes, which is a little bit different this year than last year because of the job change and everything. So pray for us and pray for all the, the stuff, uh, song and sword. Pray for us um, at, at uh, 149 every day in represent, uh, representing Psalm 149. We're praying at 149 every day. I hope you'll join us with that. We're going to be in First Peter today. Uh, this first letter that the Apostle Peter wrote to um, really just the, the people that were people of God, Christians, all over the world. Um, he calls them elect exiles, and we'll get to that exile word here in just a moment. Um, but, but Peter writes this letter to encourage all the Christians throughout the world. And we come to this great passage. I wanna, I'm reminded of it again today. It's brought encouragement to my heart, and I want it to bring encouragement to yours. Um, 1 Peter 2, verse 9, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies, excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Do you ever wonder, and I know many people do, why God uh, set the Jewish people aside, the descendants of Abraham, uh, as a nation that was his own people that he called his own, a special nation, nobody else got that designation, the people of God? Well, I believe it's because as I see all of history unfold and I look at the scriptures, I believe it's because God had intended all along to make the people who come to him by faith through Jesus Christ his people. So that in the New Testament, when you, when you hear about the people of God, he's not talking only about the Jewish people, the descendants of Abraham. He's talking about those of us who are, are Christians, those of us who by faith follow Jesus Christ. And that makes us then exactly as the, as the Jewish people were, the Hebrew people were in the Old Testament. We're a chosen race. Now think about that. We're, we're a chosen race. We're a chosen group of people. What is our race? What is our, what is our uh, skin color? What is our DNA? Our DNA is Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what social standing you have, what title you may or may not have. In Jesus Christ, we are all one race. We're the followers of Jesus Christ, Christians. And we are a royal priesthood. We're a holy nation, a people set for his own possession. The Lord possesses us. And so there's a couple of things we do with that. Why, Why though, we got to ask ourselves this question. And this is where I think um, the people of Jewish descent, of Hebrew descent, descendants of Abraham, missed the call. Why would God choose a holy nation? Why would he make us a people set apart for his own purpose? Here's why. Because he wants us to, he wants us to influence the other nations. He still has a heart for those who are lost. So he says, now, now that we are all these things, the chosen race, the holy nation, um, we can proclaim the excellencies, excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into marvelous light. We, we are to declare what God has done for us. Because the truth is, we're not chosen race because we're good. We're not chosen race because we're better than every other race. We're chosen 
We are chosen. I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying here. I'm not talking about any race race, like white or, or uh, black or Asian or Hispanic, any races that we talk about. I'm talking about the spiritual race that is Christianity, following Jesus Christ by his spirit, that spiritual DNA that's in us. And that, we are, we are made that holy nation, spiritual, set apart for God race so that we can declare to others about him because he's not done building his family, building his royal priesthood, building his holy nation. And so here's two ways we can do that, okay? Number one, we can live as sojourners and exiles. See, that's how we understand our place in this world. We don't belong here. We are, we are living in a foreign land. We don't speak the language. We don't understand the customs. If you've ever been to a foreign been to a place where you are not the main, uh, you're not the main race, you don't speak the language, you don't understand all the customs, they're all new to you. Now, I thrive on that, I enjoy that. Uh, but if you've ever been in that setting, it can be uncomfortable. That's the way the world should be to us. Every new technology should, should seem strange to us. Every new term that comes out, all the new media that comes out, the new stuff that everybody says, this is the cool stuff now. It, it, should, it should seem weird to us because we're not of this world. We're exiles and sojourners. We, we've kind of landed in a place that's not our own, but we are still the people of God. When the people of God were in Babylonian captivity, they were still the people of God. They were just exiles and sojourners. So what do we do? We, we keep our, we, we do not, we do not give in to the ways of the world. We abstain from the passions of the land we live in. And number two, we conduct ourselves among the Gentiles in a way that's honorable so that when they see us, they go, oh, they're the people of God. Today, on this Tuesday, stand out a little bit. Be different. Don't look like everybody else in the world because you are a chosen race, royal priesthood, a holy nation, people set apart for God. Hope that encourages your day. God bless you on this Tuesday. See you soon.